Hi. Today we are going to make a biomechanical analysis of an elbow joint. What do I mean by that? Okay. See, I am holding a book like this. How is the elbow able to sustain the weight of the book? That's what we are going to analyze today. First thing, let's look at the anatomy of an elbow joint. We have drawn a schematic of an elbow joint. We have the biceps, the front, the triceps at the back, both the biceps and the triceps or muscles. This bone is known as the humerus. Then we have radius and ulna. Okay. And this joint here has both cartilages and lubrication fluids known as synovial fluids. Okay. So because of this, this joint allows rotation of this part of the arm. Okay. That's a function of an elbow joint. Okay. Now let's look at the mechanical approximation of this biological system. The bottom part can be approximated by a bar, rigid bar. The top part can be approximated by another rigid bar. And because this joint allows rotation of the arms, okay, allows rotation between these two bars, what we have here is a pin joint. Okay. Then when we are holding a book, the muscles that are active or the biceps and we have the force due to due to the muscles f okay then we have the weight of the the hand okay approximately let's say 20 newtons acting at the cg of the hand and then we have the weight of the book let's say 100 newtons because it's a gain so this system can be mechanically approximated at this system okay and this distance is usually about 4 centimeters cg let's say it's at a distance of 10 centimeter and let's say the total length is about 30 centimeters so now we took a biological system we have a mechanical approximation first question what should be the muscular force F to sustain the weight of the book as well as weight of the bottom book? So I'm going to name this joint as J. In order to find the force F, we essentially notice above point J, there are three moments acting. Moment due to the muscle, moment due to the weight of the hand, moment due to the weight of the book. In order for this part to be in equilibrium, the moment should cancel each other. So we are going to write the equations of moment equilibrium. Moment about point J is 0. So we have force F times its momentum 4 centimeters. Weight 20 times its momentum 10 centimeters. And uh, 100 times its momentum 30 centimeters. F times 4 is in the counterclockwise direction say it's positive 20 times 10 is in the clockwise direction it's a negative again 100 times 30 is in the clockwise direction so again it's a negative sum of all this should be zero let's see moment equation okay so from this equation we can calculate the force to be 800 newtons now let's go one step further and ask what are the reaction forces at this joint in order to do that we have to draw a free body diagram of this particular bar okay we have the bar pin joint j forces f 20 and 100 okay now we separated the top bar we should account for the effects at the point of separation which is the joint J. With respect to the top bar, the bottom bar cannot move. So the top bar exerts a 
horizontal reaction force Rx. With respect to the top bar, the bottom bar cannot move the y direction. So it exerts a vertical reaction force. With respect to the top bar, the bottom bar can rotate. So there are no moments. So there are two unknown forces. How do we find them? Again, invoke equations of equilibrium. We already used one sum of moments above any point is zero. We chose point J. We have sum of forces in the x direction to be zero. Sum of forces in the y direction to be zero. Sum of forces in x equal to zero implies there is only one force Rx that is zero. Sum of forces in the y direction we have F the positive direction plus Ry in the positive direction minus 20 in the negative direction and minus 100 in the negative direction to be 0. Okay. We already know the value of F. From this we can calculate Ry to be minus 680 newtons. So let's look at what this negative number means here. While writing an unknown force, we assumed a direction. We said Ry is going to act in the positive direction. In reality, we did not know whether the force was acting upwards or downwards. When we did not know, so that direction information about an unknown force, write it down and the equations of equilibrium will tell you the direction. For example, here we assumed it to be positive. And when we solved it, we realized it is a negative value. So the force is actually acting along the negative y direction which is downwards. Okay. So there is one more question we can answer about the elbow joint. We notice say the biceps in this case was exerting a force of 800 newtons. Let us say uh, the muscle, the bicep muscle exerts 200 newtons per centimeter square of muscle area. What is the area of the muscle required to exert this force, 800 newtons? It's a simple question. 800 over 200 should be 4 centimeter square should be the amount of muscular area that should be required exert this force if an unit area exerts 200 newtons. Okay. With that, let me summarize what we saw so far. We looked at the anatomy of a elbow joint. We found its mechanical approximation, idealization or approximation of the elbow joint. Okay. And the first thing, first problem we looked at is to find the muscular force F. Why did we do that? Because finding one unknown using moment equilibrium is easy. So we wrote the moment equilibrium and found the unknown muscular force. Then we also wanted to know the unknown reaction forces at this approximated pinch joint or at this joint in the elbow. We took the bottom bar approximation, wrote equations of equilibrium for it, then found the reaction forces. In addition to that, let us say if a unit area of muscle exerts a 200 Newton force, what is the muscular area that is required to exert 800 Newton force? It is a simple ratio problem that turns out to be 4 centimeter square. Okay. So in total we looked at 5 kinds of questions with respect to elbow joints. First is with respect to anatomy, second is with respect to idealization, third is finding unknown muscular forces, fourth is finding unknown reaction forces in the joint. Finally, the area of the muscle required to sustain a muscular force. Okay, thanks for watching and I am going to give you a slightly modified problem as a bonus. So while making this approximation, we assume elbow is at right angles. What if instead of it being at a right angle, say it was at an angle theta from the horizontal. How would the forces change? How would the moment equilibrium and force equilibrium change? How would these values change? It is a good exercise to test your understanding. Okay. Try it out and please